Well, Netflix share is seeing a boost after beating estimates for the third quarter. The streaming giant saw a rise in subscriber growth once again. It's now expecting to add another four and a half million subscribers in the fourth quarter. But streaming isn't the only thing on Netflix's mind as it looks to also expand into cloud gaming. Joining us now with more on Netflix's journey ahead is Gita Ranganathan, Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Media Analyst. We've also got Dave Hedger. He is Edward Jones Senior Equity Analyst. Welcome to both of you today. Gita, let me start with you. I mean, certainly we have seen a big rally in the stock, although you could argue it's fallen so much. Expectations were pretty low coming in. They did beat on the sub numbers. What else stood out to you? Yeah, so I think definitely the 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 one thing that stood out is that this company is clearly back on track. I mean, of course, the three Q numbers were definitely much stronger than expected, but I think what was equally reassuring uh, and even encouraging is the four Q guidance kind of came in slightly higher than consensus. And remember, this was not even factoring in factoring in a huge catalyst that they have on the horizon, which is the debut of their new ad supported tier uh, that they're going to be pricing this at a really aggressive seven dollar price point historically the lowest price uh, you know that, that netflix has ever come out with so it should kind of open up a whole new market for them um and then of course they're you know uh, they're again reinforcing some of their financial metrics uh in terms of free cash flow as well as profit margins yeah, and Dave, to that point, the company making it pretty clear, the ad supported tier are not really going to be a material impact, at least in this quarter, because it's being introduced a little later. But I want to point to one thing that has really stood out here, and that's the FX headwinds highlighted many times in this report, the sequential decline in revenue, they say is entirely because of FX. Looking through the numbers here, they estimate full year appreciation of the dollar will ne negatively affect full year revenue operating income by one billion roughly each. So how does the company adjust for that? Is there anything they can do in terms of the pricing or the cost structure that will allow them to have a bit more of a buffer with the dollar expected to be strong for longer? Well, they, certainly they can try to adjust pricing um, in international markets to account for the, the um, foreign exchange pressure. Uh, however, that's have a, a fine tight rope to be walking uh, just in terms of you don't want to increase price too much uh, and in turn um, you know, affect subscriber growth. Uh, we do think that the, the ad supported service should help uh, drive subscriber growth in international markets. Uh, certainly, I think the lower price point will be attractive in, in certain markets overseas. Um, you know, there's more ability to pay at that, that lower price point. So that may be where um, Netflix can find some balance uh, and certainly uh, the revenue from the advertising could offset the, the lower price point and in turn also help offset some of the foreign exchange pressure. Uh, Gita, as you pointed out, you know, the company highlighting that we are back on the path to reaccelerate growth. Uh, certainly the ad tier is something a lot of analysts have been looking to, but at the end of the day, it, it is a content company. And they've sort of highlighted that even as the past few quarters have not been as strong in terms of their sub numbers. Engagement has still been high compared to other streaming competitors. Uh, what's that next catalyst, do you think, when you look at the content pipeline for this company that could push it even higher? Yeah, I think we've now seen really the steady cadence of, you know, content titles. We were kind of hit by that whole COVID logjam. And they did say that that's going to take a little bit of time to kind of unwind. But we've seen them deliver consistent hits, obviously. Uh, you know, they're, they're, some of their biggest hitting titles being, you know, Stranger Things. But then they've had a lot of newer shows that have also performed really, really well. The, the Jeffrey Dharma show being a great example of that. Um, and we're seeing them kind of hold their content budget steady. But remember, we are seeing a lot of the other streamers. So a lot of the competition is also down dialing back on their content spend. And I think that's a really important point because, um, you know, maybe we're going to see some of those competitive pressures ease up a little bit as some of these streamers start to understand that profitability is becoming more and more important. And I think that really gives Netflix a leg up, um, you know, as they try and get more and more bang for their buck. And this is exactly what they spoke to. They said they're getting more impact for every dollar of content spend 
Um, and we're seeing that with some of the engagement metrics that they posted. The other point that I want to make here is that with some of those engagement metrics, you come out with an advertising product. I mean, this is really so um, attractive to advertisers, knowing that they have that deep engagement, knowing that they have a captive audience, which is on their platform for about two, two and a half hours every day. Advertisers are going to be willing to pay up. And Dave, finally, is the company looks to see, look, looks for other uh, levers to drive revenue. Uh, we got some news from the VP of gaming there saying that Netflix is now looking at uh, cloud gaming a as a potential. They've also going to have a cloud uh, or gaming segment um, within uh, their Southern California um, headquarters there or their offices there. I mean, this is a very crowded space. This would be sort of a new venture for Netflix. They've been talking about it for some time. Is this something that you think Netflix can compete in just given the players that are already in the space? Yeah, certainly the gaming space is, is a challenging market and, and a lot of competition in that market. Um, we view that as, as something that might be incremental for Netflix and, and in particular may not drive a lot of subscriber growth but perhaps could help in terms of subscriber retention. Uh, yeah, that's, I think, one of the challenges uh, when the content schedule was a little more uneven, uh, that you know, when there's not content that people are urgently wanting to watch, that that's where you see churn tick up uh, and people you know, cut off their service for a while, where you know, gaming could be another way of keeping subscribers engaged and holding on to their subscription, even when it's a time period that one of their favorite shows isn't you know, has already debuted and, and they've already watched those episodes. It is about uh, continuing to make the platform sticky with so many of these streaming companies. Uh, appreciate your time to both of you, Gita Ranganathan, Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Media Analyst, and Dave Hagar, he's Edward Jones Senior Equity Analyst.